it fits with neurology, it fits with gut hormones, uh, molecular stuff, biochemistry, it fits with everything. If you're a scientist and you're working in any aspect of biology, because of the way the endocrine system is, it affects every single cell in the body. And this is the reason why all scientists should consider themselves as endocrinologists. So you work on endocrinology even if you don't work on endocrinology because every organ that you study has an endocrinology component. So I come from a very strict neuroscience background, but now I have interest in metabolism, cardiovascular, again, still the brain, immunology. I have a strong interest on the way how the immune system and you know disease like uh, inflammation or infection um, are regulated by our hormones and in turn regulate our hormones. So it, it won't limit you to one system. It actually will give you the chance to explore how different systems work together, which for me is, is fascinating. So I work mainly on the regulation of appetite. I'm really interested in how the, the gut senses what you've eaten and it signals via hormones to the brain uh, to tell the brain whether you should feel full or whether you should, should feel hungry. Appetite is related very much to body weight and obesity and that's a major health problem around diseases like diabetes. Whatever particular um, health problem you're interested in, it virtually always has an endocrine aspect and I guess it's also exciting to be involved in um, in, in biological systems that have real clinical relevance. Even if you're a scientist, you like to be working on something that means something to somebody. You might be doing the basic science, but that's underpinning things that we're looking at in the future for treating disease and, and helping patients. And I guess that's an exciting area to be working in. There's an opportunity to making a mark as a scientist, not just in rare diseases, but also all the common diseases as well. My focus is really about the basic mechanisms, how hormones and receptors for hormones work. And we, we develop uh, rather unique uh, microscopy methods that allow us to monitor uh, these receptors directly in living cells. I think endocrinology is a very fascinating uh, field and area because we learn things about basic mechanisms, looking for instance and mutations that we find in patients. I work in endocrinology, but I collaborate with hepatologists, with people doing nutrition, with diabetologists, with transplant surgeons. So it's sort of at the hub of many things. And you can't look at endocrinology as something that's going to isolate you. It's actually going to open many doors, but also then see the clinical translation. Because after all, we're all working towards a clinical translation of trying to look towards helping people with a specific disease. My PhD project was looking at a first in human study of a new treatment for menopausal hot flushes. And it looks like it, it's, it's going to work and become a new treatment. We only thought of that idea because one of our scientist colleagues have spent 20 years investigating their hypothesis and if she hadn't continued to do that often with other people telling her she was wrong we would have never got to the point of thinking that this could potentially be a new clinical treatment and seeing it through into the clinic and so really good basic science is absolutely essential for the translation of new clinical therapies.